My name is Janet Yarrow. I am professor of biology at Housatonic Community College. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist with a master's degree in human nutrition. My topic for Earth Day 2021 is the future of food. Food has great significance in our lives. It's a source of nourishment, but also means love, life, connection, and celebration. What kind of foods will be available for us in the future? I follow food trends and I see a trend toward increased food technology. Food technology, using technology to create new foods or new methods of growing foods or creating foods, using technology to manipulate foods to have certain prop properties. Uh, technology is exciting, it's fun, it's new, but don't assume technology is going to bring us healthier food products. But there's also a movement toward growing foods in a more sustainable and healthy way than we currently do. Regenerative farming is the name given to the movement toward growing foods more in tune with nature than we currently do. The push toward regenerative farming is becoming popular as we see our traditional way of farming damaging our environment and decreasing the healthfulness of our foods. Two trends for the future of food, one looks toward technology and the other looks toward nature. Technology in food has brought us genetically modified foods, synthetic meat products that imitate the flavor and texture of real meat and ultra processed foods. The future will bring us more genetically modified foods, more synthetic and ultra processed foods, plus lab grown meat, meat that's grown from the cells of animals in the lab. Also food made in 3D printers. Genetically modified foods were originally introduced to the world as a solution to increase food production. It's failed at that. It's also failed to increase nutritional content of foods. And it has failed at decreasing the amount of chemicals sprayed on crops. So health benefits, not yet seen. Environmental cost, yes, there's been some environmental cost of genetically modified foods. To explain what it is, genetically modified foods are foods that have been genetically modified to possess certain characteristics that they do not naturally possess. So some of the genetically modified foods on the market are corn, sugar beets, and soybeans. Many more genetically modified foods are coming to the market in the future. Just to give you an idea about how much we're eating genetically modified foods, in 2018, 92% of the corn planted in the USA was genetically modified corn. So there's many different kinds of genetically modified um, foods and corn. Uh, give you an example, Roundup Ready genetically modified corn is one on the market. It was created by taking a gene from a bacteria and implanting it into the seed of the corn. So when it's grown, it has this gene from the bacteria. Now the gene that was implanted into the corn has the unique ability to withstand continuous spraying of the herbicide Roundup without dying. So in a cornfield, the herbicide Roundup is used to kill weeds that grow among the corn plants. And when it, the Roundup is sprayed, the corn plant gets sprayed too. You can't help it because they're all together, the weeds and the corn. And the weeds become, you know, um, kind of immune to the Roundup. So more and more Roundup have to be sprayed and eventually the amount of Roundup sprayed could kill the corn. So instead this um, GMO Roundup ready corn, no matter how much Roundup is sprayed on the corn, never dies because it has the gene from the bacteria that has the ability to resist the continuous spraying of the herbicide Roundup without dying. So we have this Roundup ready corn that can take a lot of spraying of Roundup, no matter how much is sprayed of Roundup, the corn won't die. There's also Roundup Ready soy, Roundup Ready canola, and Roundup Ready wheat is under development. So unfortunately, the Roundup Ready genetically modified food crops 
do result in a dramatic, a dramatically increased use of the herbicide Roundup. So Roundup does pose a threat to the environment as most herbicides do, and the runoff of spring, the Roundup pollutes our waterways and, and kills off the healthy bacteria and microbes in the soil. It affects insects and birds and butterflies. So you have a downside to the genetically modified Roundup Ready corn. And this month, April, GMO fish called Aqua Bounty GMO salmon will be available to buy. Now this Aqua Bounty GMO salmon was made when a gene from the Pacific Chinook salmon was inserted into the Atlantic salmon. And this gene has a characteristic of speeding up growth in the fish. So now the Atlantic sal salmon will grow a lot faster. Some people think this is good. I just think not so good. As in most things in life, there are pros and cons of genetically modified foods. There's risks and there's benefits. But more and more genetically modified foods will be introduced into the market as food technologists continually make changes to the food we're eating. Now, the, synet the synthetic imitation meat products that come in the market have been created to look and taste like real meat, real meat, yeah, but they're highly processed foods and they do have a carbon footprint. Replacing real meat with this imitation meat may cut down on the methane, one of the greenhouse gases, but the processing of this imitation meat increases the amount of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide output, another greenhouse gas in the environment. So although methane is decreased, you're increasing carbon dioxide. You're trading one greenhouse gas for another doesn't make sense. Imitation meat products are highly processed, not particularly healthy. Read the ingredient label, you'll see. Coming soon is lab produced meat, meat grown in the lab from animal cells. Already grown in the lab, beef, chicken, and duck, but they're not yet allowed to be sold as food, but very soon they're coming. What is the carbon footprint for creating lab-grown meat? Well, it depends on the energy source used. If it's a renewable energy source, not such a high carbon footprint, but if it wasn't a renewable energy source, you have a bigger carbon footprint. So we see these technolo this technology in foods is moving us further and further away from nature, giving us foods not particularly healthy for us or the environment. Now you wanna compare that with regenerative farming, which is a new way of farming that aligns with nature to produce nutrient rich, healthy foods while having a positive impact on the environment. It's a way of farming, regenerative farming, that starts with creating healthy soil. It's all about the soil. It starts with the soil making the soil very healthy, using methods that work with nature that improve the soil. And that would be crop rotations, you know, not planting the same food in the same spot over and over again. Cover crops, using that to enrich the soil, compost, companion planting, animal manure, and not using pesticides, hormones and antibiotics and synthetic fertilizers. And all of those things take a big toll on the environment. Currently, conventional farming, that's most of our farms now, use pesticides and hormones and antibiotics on farm animals and synthetic fertilizers. And it takes a big toll on the environment, polluting waterways and polluting the soil and uh, affecting wildlife and insects. The future of food should be regenerative farming. It should be replacing the now conventional farming that we have. Farming in tune with nature by concentrating again on the health of the soil to grow healthier foods, that is the key. So healthier soil produces healthier plants, healthier animals, creating a healthier ecosystem and a healthier planet. And regenerative farming can also help fight climate change. If you have healthy soils, it helps to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas 
and it contributes to climate change. So healthy soils can actually pull it out of the atmosphere and store it in the soil. This is called carbon sequestration and is a critical tool in the fight against climate change. Now, the healthier the soil, the more carbon can be taken from the atmosphere and stored in the soil. So, as you can see, a healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy animals, healthy ecosystem, healthy atmosphere, healthy environment, everything healthy. It all starts with the soil and regenerative farming concentrates on replenishing the soil, making it as healthy as possible. Now, animal agriculture, you know, raising animals for food is often a target in climate change, but regenerative farming actually involves a method of rotational grazing of animals that benefits the planet. It benefits the planet. So these grazing animals, they eat a little bit, they eat, they eat grass and, and weeds at one spot, then they move on, they eat in another spot, they eat in another spot. And by this rotational grazing, it stimulates plant growth, photosynthesis, increasing soil carbon deposits, pulling the carbon out of the atmosphere, depositing it into the soil. And not only is that good for the environment, the carbon in the soil improves soil fertility as well. Also, as animals graze and move about, the manure and the plant matter, the dead plant matter on the ground are trampled into the ground where they break down to further enrich the soil. Regenerative farming takes us closer to nature on a sustainable path to provide nourishing foods for future generations, giving us healthy plants and animals, honoring our planet. Technological advances in foods are new and always exciting but it moves us further away from foods in its whole natural form. It's only through knowledge and awareness change can happen. If regenerative farming resonates with you, please do more research and support the movement. Thanks very much.